So, should you sell your Neural DSP Quad Cortex and get the IK Multimedia Tonex instead? Let's talk about it. Hi there, my name is Eric and I play bass and uh, I felt like doing a bit of a rant or discussion or what have you today. So back in 2017 I had the opportunity to try out both the Line 6 Helix LT and the Headrush pedal board and uh, after quite a short time I actually committed to using the Line 6 Helix and the main reason for that was the user interface and th the fact that you had a desktop editor that you could you know tweak your tones on and leave the Helix on the floor whereas the Headrush only could be edited on the screen and the Headrush is quite a big unit so that was a bit of a hassle actually so that was the reason why I committed to using the Helix for quite a few years. Another reason for why I stuck with the Helix for quite a long time was that it had way more options in terms of signal routing and it allowed me to use my Yamaha Attitude Limited 3 bass in the way that Billy Sheen uh, used his uh, or uses his you know with uh, two outs and two ins and separate signal paths and all of that good stuff so fast forward a few years and uh, Neural DSP uh, asked me to beta test and uh, you know try out the quad cortex which was still being in development and I my first unit that I had didn't even have a serial number on, on the uh, backplate so to speak. Uh, sadly I had to send that one back because um, it had a few hardware uh, upgrades that uh, I couldn't do myself so uh, I had to send it back and I now have a production unit but nevertheless it was really cool to get asked to be a part of that entire process and I'm forever grateful uh, to Doug and Pancho and the guys at Neural for trusting me with that. And about the time when I got the opportunity to do that with the Quad Cortex, I switched from using Line 6 modelers to using the Quad Cortex instead because uh, it took quite it took up quite a bit of my time, and I figured I'd I'd stick with it and use the things that I had I had learned using the Helix and the Headrush and the HX Stomp and apply that knowledge to the quad cortex instead which was which proved to be uh, quite resourceful for 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 me and my learning experience with the units like i said i had been using the hx stomp as my main modeler uh, up till then after uh, using the helix lt for quite a long time as well um, but i went with the hx stomp as it kind of suited me better with you know building pedal boards and stuff like that which i enjoy doing before we go any further, a huge shout out again to my friend John Willis who has taught me so much when it comes to digital units and how they uh, react and how they don't react and how you can you know, set EQs and all of that stuff. He has been so resourceful that I can't even begin to express my gratitude towards him uh, when it comes to all of this. So there you have my backstory in, in a way when it comes to digital units and stuff like that. Anyways. A few weeks back, IK Multimedia announced the pedal version of the Tonex. Um, Tonex has been a very um, talked about plugin for your DAW, which allows you to do what the Kemper and the Quad Cortex allows you to do uh, in their format, which is to capture or profile uh, existing amps, rigs, pedals, what have you. And I've seen quite a lot of posts about oh I'm selling my quad cortex now I'm gonna go with a tonex instead it sounds better um, pretty much in the same way that people have gone regarding the Kemper and the quad cortex and there you ha still have the dichotomy of people going now oh the Kemper sounds better oh the quad cortex sounds better now we have the tonex people as well going about oh which one sounds the best and a dear friend of mine once said that Comparing which digital modeler sounds the best is like comparing which anime character looks the best. So when I first saw these posts, I went, oh, well, of course, because people are always chasing the next big thing. This is the way things are and always will be. And then I gave it a bit of thought 
and I think I came to this conclusion. Life is not a preset and music is not a preset. And what people are doing with, you know, the Helix and the Quad Cortex and the Kemper and Headrush and, you know, what have you, is that most people are looking for, I think, the easy way out of uh, spending time with your instrument and your rig. Yana Quistala did a video uh, a year or so back where he said, real musicians don't go into beast mode, they put the time in. And however cranky and how much of a jab that was at a certain different bass lesson uh, studio, there is something to that because that's kind of the internet in a nutshell, ain't it? I mean, we're just looking for that easy way to get great tone at the tip of our fingers, with just one press of a button, we get this amazing tone. And we don't care how we got it, we just want it. And I think that we need to take a step back and look to ourselves and actually commit to gear. I committed to the Helix for quite a few years, um, and I've committed to the Quad Cortex for quite a few years now already. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't buy new stuff and that you should stop buying gear. If that makes you happy, go ahead, buy new stuff, by all means. I mean, the main reason why I have this channel is because I test out gear and I demo gear and I love gear. But when it comes down to like the gist of it and what's important, I think we need to look at ourselves and, you know, why do we do this? What is it that we want? Why do we chase the next piece of gear? Is it because the older gear is insufficient for what we want and that it doesn't suit our needs? A year or two back, Ole Anglin did a pretty interesting video in which he took his old pod and he disengaged the cabinet section of it and he used his new modern IRs that he had made himself, I think. And it sounded, you know, like something you would hear today, like a modern unit. I think it sounds great. And when it sounds this great, I kind of start wondering, have we really gone a lot further? I think that speaks quite a bit for what we're doing today and what we're, you know, going for. Before you sell your Quad Cortex to get a Tonex, or your Helix to get a Quad Cortex, or your Kemper to get a Helix, or, you know, your Tube Amp to get a car, I don't know. Look to yourself and ask yourself, have I committed to this unit? Have I learned how to use it? Do I know how to work it? Do I understand it? I saw a null test comparing the Kemper, the Quad Cortex and the Tonex to a real amp. You know, the guy had four uh, different tracks and he did a null test in which he compared a recording of the amp to those three units. In the null, in the null test, it went Kemper, Quad Cortex and Tonex, if, if, if you listen to the null test, in terms of differences. point is that they all sounded great. Anatrans did a video a few months back comparing, I think it was Kemper Helix and Quad Cortex, and they went with different units for different tones. And the point is that they all sound great. And before you go chasing that tone dragon that is digital modeling, uh, and before you sell the unit that you have to get a new one, Look to yourself and ask yourself, do I know how this unit works? Do I know what's holding me back in terms of tone and in terms of signal routing and all of that? Uh, again, my friend John Willis, he has spent so much time with just the HX stump, which in itself is a quite limited unit compared to the big helix in terms of, you know, signal routing and the amount of blocks that you've got available. And he has made some amazing, amazing tones using that unit. That's because he has spent the time with it. And I, I mean, there's a huge market for people selling presets and selling tones. And I, can, I, can, I totally get that. I totally get that you hear a tone and you want that. I totally get that you wanna want that tone because you think that's how I'm gonna sound like that. And the answer is no, you will never sound like 
your hero just by using his or her preset. You will sound like you playing through your hero's preset. Because your hero, who has dialed in that tone, has spent the hours tweaking every parameter of that preset to his or her liking. In terms of compression, in terms of drive, everything is set the way that your hero needs it to be. And it won't suit you in the way that you think. The thing that we need to keep in mind when it comes to all of that is that we need to use those presets and captures and profiles and all of that as a stepping point for our own knowledge and our own learning and not just as a, you know, okay, done. Here's my preset, here's my tone. Because that way you're gonna go chasing the next dragon that comes along. You're gonna chase the next unit. You're gonna chase the Tonex, or you're gonna chase the Helix 2, or the Kemper uh, Super Rack, or whatever it's called. You're gonna chase that, because you haven't committed to your own gear and your own stuff. So the point I'm trying to make with that is that instruments and amps and all of that are tools to make music, nothing else. There's nothing musical about an instrument standing in a corner. It's musical once you pick it up and once you learn every in and out of it that's when you can make music with it, proper music. And I think you should keep that in mind when it comes to gear, and when it comes to modders and stuff like that. Commit to your gear and uh, <laughs> that's about it, rant over. So usually on this channel I post <laughs> gear videos and me playing and stuff like that. Um, however, I felt like doing this rant, I, I, I need to get this off my chest, I think. So with all this being said, if you enjoyed this video and this rant, leave a comment down below, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. My name is Eric and I usually play bass and I'll see you guys and gals and cats and dogs in the next video. Until next time, take care. Bye.